Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I am thrilled to be sharing with you the November Small Die of the Month kit from Spellbinders. If you are unfamiliar with the kits that they offer, I will link them in the description and that way you can get yourself familiar with them. It is a great deal and especially this month, it is so much fun. We're going to be showing off this deer and the words that come in the kit, and the deer is a paper piecing die. So if you've never used a paper piecing die, basically the die itself cuts out lots of different pieces of the image, and you can cut them out of several different colors of cardstock and sort of piece the colors together how you see fit. That way you can make a really cool image. You don't have to do any coloring if you don't want to, but I did decide today to color the inside body portion of the reindeer. So the reindeer itself cuts out a thin outline for the entire reindeer. It cuts out the body, the hooves, the tail, the ears, the nose, and then there's also a an option to cut out antlers separately. So I decided I wanted to add a little bit of dimension and shading into the body. So I've cut out this deer from two pieces of different cardstock. I did one a very dark brown and then one a really light tan or like a creamy white color. And that was so I could color in the individual pieces. This just let me bring a little bit more interest into the piece, but it's absolutely not necessary. So you'll see there in the top right my outline of the deer and how this body just fits perfectly right inside of it. And this is basically what paper piecing is. It's just a tiny little puzzle. So I've gone ahead and colored that leg that comes out separately as well so I could put it right in there. And then I'm also going to go in off camera and I'm going to color in the hooves, the nose, and the ears. I do the nose red just to look like maybe Rudolph a little bit. I do the ears a pink color and the hooves a very dark gray, almost a black color. And I leave the bushy tail that creamy white color just because I thought it looked cute. So let's go ahead and get into the scene that I do for this card. I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and just cut out my snowbank. I don't have this exact shape in a die for a snowbank, so it's easy just to take your X-Acto knife, sort of cut out this like slopey figure, and you can use that as a snowbank, and that's one of my favorite tips for using in my X-Acto knife. I'm going to go ahead and blend Distress Oxide in both Salty Ocean and Faded Jeans all into my card front. And this card front is cut to four by five and a quarter. So it's just slightly smaller than an A2 size card. I make sure to saturate the entire paper in Salty Ocean, which is my lightest blue, and to do just the edges in Faded Jeans, which is the darker blue, just to look maybe like a sunset or like night is falling. If you noticed in the photo in the beginning, I do a sort of distant tree scene or this line of trees. So I'm going to be making my horizon and I just want to put a really light pencil mark where I'm going to adhere the snowbank because my horizon is going to go with the snowbank. So I do that very light line and then go in with my a very dark, I used a B39 Copic uh, marker, but any really dark blue will do. And this just makes the horizon nice and it will be cohesive with the trees that way there's no direct sort of like tree color on the snow since it is supposed to be a ways away i'm going to trim the excess off of my card front where the snowbank is and that's easy to do just by turning it around and seeing where it's hanging off and here is the essential scene of my card now we're going to go in and draw these really distant pine trees and I'm again going to be using b39 for this I also go in later off camera and do a little bit with w7 just to bring a little bit of shading in with it or um, a little depth but I don't think it's necessary and if I could do it again I would just leave the b39 just the blue so basically what I'm using or what I'm doing for a technique for these distant trees is just a scribbly triangle and when they're distant like that I guess I would assume that's kind of how they look but I think that the idea gets across anyway anybody's going to perceive this as distant trees I do make sure that I keep them all sort of touching because the closer you are to the tree it would be larger or it appear larger and then the farther away you are it would be smaller but if they were all intertwined you would see some inside of you know between two trees and so I just wanted to keep it as authentic as I possibly could 
So that was a really easy technique and I think it actually made the card scene look really beautiful and I love the way it turned out. So we're going to go ahead and make the sort of indentations in the snow so it doesn't look just super white. Uh, so what we're going to do is take B00 and just make these little sort of squiggly lines, almost like waves kind of, and then go over them, blend out a little bit with BG10. And then I'm going to take my clear, my colorless blender and I'll go through the entire snowbank, and this just blends that color out. It gives it a nice, looks like maybe a reflection from the sky or the moon. And when you look at snow, obviously, it doesn't all just look like pure white. So this gives it a little bit of dimension and interest, and I really like doing this with my snow. So I'm going to go ahead and start adhering and putting the deer together. And what I have found works best for me to put the deer together is to just lay the outline down and then adhere the body into the outline. And this will just make sure that the body fits perfectly inside. If you were just adhering the outline because it is so thin, it's a little more pliable. So it's easy for you to make it a little wonky or a little bit crooked and then the body wouldn't fit in perfectly into place like it does. So that's just my tip for this. I lay the outline down, adhere the body inside first, and then you can tear or pull away gently the outline and then adhere that over the body, and you'll be sure that it fits perfectly because you had it laying there in the first place. Again, I went ahead and colored those little pieces of cardstock that I cut out for the hooves and the ears and the nose, but you certainly could have taken the deer and cut it out of all of those separate pieces of cardstock. I think that's a great option for people who don't love to color or don't have a lot of color mediums and or coloring mediums. And I really like the idea of just being able to send it through your die cutting machine and getting this really cool look with all these different colors. The antlers that I am adhering right now are actually separate from the deer. They come in just a tiny little die, um, so you can use them or not use them. So it could be a buck or a doe. And just the way that I added some dimension to the snow earlier, I'm using those same colors to create a shadow underneath the deer. And I'm just going to go ahead and blend that out. Again, these colors are B00, BG10, and the Zero Colorless Blender. And I really love the way that this turned out. This is the basic scene. I am going to go ahead in just a minute and add some um, white gel pen snow, as you can see. I try to do these in groups of like two or three. I just like to make it look like it's just nicely uh, sprinkling snow. But I want to add that I do make sure that I go over the trees with the snow. Since the trees are in the distance, you want to give that illusion that the snow is falling in front of the trees. I also went ahead and used the word dyes Merry and Christmas, but there are lots of word dyes in this kit. It comes with bright, new, year, happy, and an ampersand. And I love the font. It's nice and big and bold. I went ahead and added some uh, B00 and BG10 again to the word dies. And then I added some glossy accents to make it a little bit icy looking. And of course, my final step was to adhere it to an A2 sized card base. And I chose a white card base just to make a nice classic border. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about how you can use the November small die kit of the month from Spellbinders. Again, everything and all the information is linked in the description, and I hope to see you back here again very soon. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye.